Yeah. Um, and coming up, we have uh, Nicholas with a super interesting talk. It's the performance evaluation of Crystal. I uh, am a performance nut and I've compared the three languages or four languages he's going to talk about. And so um, I cannot wait to, uh, to hear what he has to say and um, the findings that he has. I think I might've seen a post or two from you on the forum, but um, are you ready? Uh, and uh... Yes, awesome, I'm awesome. ready. Just gonna share my screen. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Nicola Gant. I'm a research assistant and part-time master student at Zurich University of Applied Sciences. During my studies, I uh, did a few projects uh, and one of these projects is the performance evaluation of Crystal, which I did with the help of my supervisor, Jürgen Spielberger. So, this quote can be found on the readme of Crystal. Uh, for myself, coming from Ruby, a few questions came to mind. First off, how fast is Crystal? Can Crystal keep up with C? And how do you even compare the performance of different programming languages? To answer the Last question, I've had a closer look at benchmarking. In an optimal world, you would use a real world application and convert it into the different programming languages. Unfortunately, there are a few issues with that approach. First off, it's very complex and error prone, meaning that a tiny difference in implementation can have a huge impact on the performance. Additionally, the software architecture chosen for the initial language might not be optimal with the other languages. This could be maybe because of some missing or additional language features. Thirdly, when looking at a existing application, you use a lot of different libraries. And when you go into other languages, there might not be a very equivalent version of that library. So for example, if you take a Ruby on Rails application and try to convert it to Crystal, of course, you can use the Ember or Locky framework or anything like that, but I'm not sure if you're really measuring the performance of the programming language and not to a major part of the framework itself. So what was my workaround? I tried to identify uh, different parts that are used in real world applications and try to measure those. I tried not only to look at algorithms written entirely in the programming language, but also with the interaction with external sources. And I, I kept to just using the standard library of the uh, language. So which languages did I look at? Of course, Crystal. <laughs> but also Ruby with or without just-in-time compilation, even though that's quite a unfair comparison since Ruby is interpreted. Then additionally, I've had a look at C. Uh, yeah, basically because it was written in the readme and is known for its speed. And as a more modern approach of a fast programming languages, I've looked at Go. I've uh, detected some different performance tests. In algorithms, I've looked at different implementations of the Fibonacci sequence, mainly recursive and iterative. Then another uh, bigger part was the file handling, so reading, uh, writing files in smaller and larger chunks, as well as reading the files. In the last group, I have had some other uh, tests, for example, calling C bindings or 
the startup time, meaning I've measured the time within the programming language and from outside of calling that. So uh, the difference of these times give a good overview of how efficient the initial startup is. As a large uh, last test, I've looked at TCP sockets where I've built a TCP server in the uh, language and this just responds with a predefined HTTP response. And this I've tested with the benchmarking tool Siege. All right, so let's start to have a look at the different results. The measurements here are always a relative running time to crystal, meaning crystal has always a value of one. And uh, for example, a value of two would indicate that it takes twice as long as it took crystal. In this first chart, we'll focus on Ruby because yet yeah, we can't really see the other programming languages. So let's have a look at Ruby in red and Ruby with just-in-time compilation in violet here. We can clearly see that, especially in the iterative Fibonacci uh, implementation, they're quite a lot slower than all the other languages. Just-in-time compilation has a great impact on the, the recursive Fibonacci implementations. But other than that, it's sometimes a bit faster or a bit slower, but in a uh, very similar range. But one thing that uh, I found quite interesting was that the TCP sockets took the same amount of time in uh, all languages. So if we remove Ruby from the equation, then we get a, a bit of a better overview. What first sticks out are the C bindings uh, in which Go marked in green takes quite a lot of time, but in comparison, Crystal in blue is almost the same as C itself in orange. If we compare Crystal directly with C, we see that it's mostly, uh, C is mostly faster, but in some cases, uh, it's also slower than Crystal, which is quite impressive. When comparing with Go, the uh, Go is sometimes a bit slower and sometimes a bit faster, but overall the performance is very comparable between these two languages. So as a conclusion, we can definitely say that Crystal can be considered as a fast programming language. It is just a bit slower than C, but comparable with Go. And I was really, really impressed with the efficiency of calling the C bindings, which would be a great indication that uh, calling, for example, machine learning libraries written in C could be uh, yeah, very interesting and efficient. Yeah, so I want to leave you with one final thought. When comparing Crystal with C, the simplicity and efficiency to write code is definitely worth the tiny decrease in performance. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, do you have time for some Q&A? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'd love to. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think this, this topic is fascinating. I'm hoping that there's some really good questions that come from the audience. Um, what is Great. the biggest surprise when you did performance evaluations of Crystal? So what surprised you? Especially the, the C bindings, that they're just basically the same than C itself, which 
especially uh, well at least with the, <laughs> uh, the measurements I did <laughs> of course there might be some more complex calls that uh, could lead to different results but yeah I really was impressed that yeah, it's that close yeah okay so here's a really great question from Brendan why would C be slower uh, slower than as in, in what case in crystal or uh, I'm not entirely sure. One thing uh, with, when comparing, the, uh, just quickly go back to the results. Uh, for writing files, I chose not to introduce uh, custom buffers in C. So that will be a, a huge impact. Mm -hmm. um, my line of thought was that I want to use a file and write to it. I don't <laughs> want to <laughs> introduce too much intellig uh, intelligence about what I want to write. So yeah, because Crystal is very good at, uh, at something like that to, how do you call it? <laughs> how do you, do you say it? <laughs> um, that you don't really need to think too much about what is your exact data you want to write. You just write and it finds good, yeah, for example, buffers to use. Okay. Good uh, default choices and optimizations and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from Jonathan, is your data publicly available? And I think he's talking about data and testing methodologies. I can share the paper without any issues. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Hopefully that'll be shared somewhere publicly where you, you where uh, he can find it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll write a link into the um, chat once I have one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what OS are these tests running on? From Christian. So. I would have the exact specs here. <laughs> so I'm nice. uh, running a Manjaro Linux. And here are also the, the exact versions of the, the programming languages I've used. Very, very cool. Uh, let's see, what's another, I think we have, we have a minute or two left. Um, <laughs> is the code for the benchmarks available? Currently not, but uh, that would be an idea to publish as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. How does crystal garbage collection affect these findings or does crystal garbage collection affect these findings in any way? I haven't looked into that. <laughs> that would be interesting. I'm not sure how yeah. you test yeah. that as well. Cause you want to make sure you hit the garbage collection in all the languages in a relatively fair way. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. How do you test garbage collection? That's a really good question. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think that's a project for itself. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually a very true point. Um, we have time for one more. Uh, how was the TP or the TCP socket benchmark done? So um, let me pull up the the code. Uh, I've uh, this is the Crystal implementation. So there is just one plain text string that was predefined and it just uh, waits for a uh, client to connect and then just prints that message, closes again. And then I've used a HTTP uh, benchmarking tool called Siege. And I've, I'm not entirely sure how many calls there were, but <laughs> a fixed amount of calls I did and measured how long it took. Awesome. Since we're running up to a break, a break I'm going to ask you one more question, which was, yeah. Have you uh, checked the memory usage in these tests? No. Or compared them? No. Nope. <laughs> that okay. could be a interesting future. <laughs> that would be very yeah. interesting. I'm curious, uh, especially with Ruby. I mean, my I have some uh, some previous experience with its garbage collection, so I am very curious about how that would work. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much for. Uh, putting this together and we are going to move on to the break here. Uh -huh.